Hello, and welcome to an installment of Public Safety Chats, where we'll hear from experts here at Forsyth Tech about educational and career opportunities within their prospective field. So today we're here with Tim Webb, and Tim Webb is our program coordinator for our electrical line worker program. How you doing, Tim? I'm doing fine. Thank you, sir. Well, Tim has a long career in this field. He has over 31 years of electrical line worker experience in all aspects of the industry. Tim joined for Side Tech as a full-time instructor in 2013 and transitioned to the program coordinator in 2022 and has helped develop the program into the major success it is today. So thank you so much for that, Tim. Thank you, sir. So Tim, can you provide an overview of the typical salary range and benefits package for professionals entering the electrical line worker field, including some of the current job openings? Yes, I'd be glad to. Uh, the students leave here and they're hired by contractors or in best drones, which is Duke Power in our area. Uh, the starting pay is anywhere from 20 to $25 an hour. Um, the job placement is like 89%. We get all these students, they all have an opportunity to take a job. It might not be locally, but uh, job placement is really well too. No, that's excellent. And uh, I, I think I heard you mention that Pike Electric is another one of the, the big supporters of our program. They are, they are. They do a lot for us. They come out and visit and, and they talk to the students. They get to know the students. And then when they graduate, they're here to offer them jobs. And uh, they've, they've uh, donated a lot of stuff as well as Duke Power to our organization. So in that, uh, as far as the salary range, I mean, I know it can kind of vary, but you know, with storm modes, you know, we obviously had a hurricane here recently that kind of came through and messed things up. And we always see those electrical line worker trucks that are out there on the road. So just give me a, a general idea, somebody who comes out and, uh, and they get into their journeyman, so they're in the field for two or three years and maybe they're responding and, and doing some storm damage, you know, what, what kind of uh, annual salary could they be looking at? Uh, these guys are looking at probably in the very beginning, a uh, minimum of, uh, you know, $40,000. Uh, storm work, of course, they go on time and a half and double time on holidays and, and uh, Sundays. Uh, a journeyman lineman, they require about 8,000 hours, basically three and a half to four years of training. Mm -hmm. These guys will advance from a groundman, what we call a groundman, up to a C-class lineman and into a B and into a A. This will take a period of time. Uh, the, of course, the salaries are always going up because they, the more they're here, the more they will advance. So it sounds like, you know, so your program is 11 weeks long. You come through an 11-week program, you graduate, you, you start into a, an agency or a contractor, and four or five years down the line, definitely when you start adding in all the storm damage, you know, the response and things you do, it sounds like they're probably tickling around that six-figure income that they could probably make after that many years. Oh, yeah. Uh, A-class lineman will make over 100000 a year. A journeyman line will make over 100000 a year. Uh, there's big money in it right now. The industry uh, is in demand for linemen, and that makes the program very successful and, and the needs, and that's the reason that people come and, and hire them. That's excellent, Tim. So what kind of career advancement opportunities are available for individuals in this field, and what steps can they take to move up the ranks? So we'll go back to that being a journeyman lineman. They get 360 hours here uh, from the Department of Labor, and that, that is their apprenticeship, apprenticeship hours, mm -hmm. and they're recognized by the industry. These companies recognize them, so they already got a start on that. So uh, they will continue that with the companies that hire them because they have that availability to start with that 360 and add to it. And uh, we also uh, offer an OSHA 10, in the industry, a transmission distribution. And uh, this is something that we have. And also we have some outside training that we do and we can bring them back for leadership training and stuff like that. Oh, and that's so excellent. And I know that we've been working on and, and hopefully sometime here in the near future, we'll be able to actually uh, have the CDL part added into the electrical line worker program. That's so, right. So, that's so right. more to come on that. So we're still working on that piece there. So what types of ongoing training and professional development are essential uh, and how does your program support those opportunities? Well, we have like, we do have some CDL training. They have a permit. They leave here basically with a permit. We have somebody from Pike to come by to do that. Um, and like I said, there, there is other training available. We set up classes 
for anything that these customers want and uh, help them in their industry. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, because I know coming into the electrical line worker program, they have to take an HRD or an intro course, basically, just to make sure that they understand what the electrical line worker field is before they actually get in on there. So I look at that as almost that same kind of piece as professional development because you're starting them out in your program knowing what that this career field looks like. So that's excellent. So what are some of the most significant challenges that professionals face in the electrical line worker field and, and how does your program uh, help them overcome those challenges? The biggest challenge is their safety, that's it. I mean, bottom line, you've got to do this work safe. We start from day one teaching them safety about the industry, uh, the incidents, accidents, how they are preventable. We start every morning with a, uh, what we call a daily briefing, the pre-job briefing about the work that we're gonna be doing and when they go on into the field, they do that too. They Every day they have to do a pre-job briefing. Uh, we're preparing them for that, you know, and getting them in that, that mode because uh, if the job changes during the day, then they have to stop and do a, another pre-job briefing to uh, stay focused on the, what their opportunities are and available to them without getting injured and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, so safety is definitely, yeah. it's ingrained in your program from day one. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so it sounds like, uh, you know, that you have developed and helped develop, you know, since you took the program over as program coordinator in 2022, uh, something that's complete, that students come in and they take that initial HRD or intro class and be able to come out. And, and again, hopefully sometime here in the near future, we'll be able to actually offer the full CDL piece on there. So uh, if anybody in the audience, or if you have anybody that wants to reach out to get into your program, they do have to take the HRD class or the intro class first before coming into the program. And so for that, you're gonna reach out to Abby Riddle, or A Riddle is the email address, A Riddle at forsytech.edu. You can reach out to Abby and get on the list for the intro program. Uh, Tim, any last words you'd like to say? Yeah, if anybody has any interest, uh Please get in touch with us because uh, this is a great opportunity for you. And uh, we do consider our, our school to be the best Lyman Academy in the state of North Carolina. And I'm a little biased, but it absolutely <laughs> is the best program in the state of North Carolina. So thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you next time on the next Public Safety Chat.